Hi, I'm Jasmine, the sequel, and I am not relatable. So we are back with another Amberlynn Reed retro reacts. I know that I just did one, but I'm not quite ready to jump back into Foodie Beauty. I think I'm, what I'm gonna end up doing is to catch up to all of her videos, I will do a last week tonight style Foodie Beauty review where I'll just go over everything that I have missed um, probably coming this Monday. Also coming Monday are the videos that I promised I would make. Uh, one of them is the second part to my Virgie Tovar series, and uh, the other one is a plum-themed Get Ready With Me uh, that a viewer requested. So, working on those. I promise you they are coming. I'm so sorry, especially for the Virgie Tovar one, that it's so delayed. That video has just been a beast to research and put all of the, the facts in order and, and just get all of my sources in, you know? Hey, guys. So, I know the video you guys got for me yesterday was a mukbang. I figured... We do another. So this is just rotisserie chicken. So I'm just gonna dive right in. <laughs> okay, so we did a mukbang yesterday, so we're gonna do a mukbang today. She's sitting here with an entire rotisserie chicken that's burnt slightly to hell. And you know, she doesn't have any cutlery. I don't see any paper napkins. And if all of that wasn't bad enough, she <laughs> she's doing this because she wants to replicate other YouTubers. Ah, this is gonna be a rough one, isn't it? I saw other mukbangers eat. I saw other mukbangers um, do this. And I was like, oh my God, that looks so good. This is why you shouldn't watch mukbangers. If you've got a problem with a particular substance, maybe don't watch people who indulge in that substance, right? I don't just mean food or alcohol or, or drugs or anything like that. I genuinely mean anything. I used to watch a lot of beauty YouTubers, <laughs> booty YouTubers. I used to watch a lot of beauty YouTubers. And what I found myself doing was that I got into this mind frame of buy, buy, buy. I've talked about this before, where I went from not having a lot of in a disposable income to having a lot of disposable income. And what I did was I just spent it, a lot of it on makeup mostly. And now I have so much makeup I don't know what to do with. And makeup, much like food is something that will go bad it will rot so there's no point in accumulating so much of it i couldn't help myself and that's how i feel that amberlyn is as well she's just indulging and in watching all of these mukbangers they trigger her to eat like they are eating and it might be doable for a stephanie sue you know but but for amberlyn at her weight even at her current weight which is 500 pounds it's still not advisable for her to be watching people who eat on camera because if she tries to follow them she might end up gaining all of that weight back she's not getting any psychiatric help so she might have a much easier time binging again and then regaining all of it because she still hasn't found other ways of coping with her internal emotional state i'm trying really hard to like eat more just like lean meats veggies i can't see what i'm doing i'm trying to give you guys a good view because realistically those things are way better for me than the things i ate to get this size that sounds good to a lot of people, but the fundamental fact is that the fat you eat is not the fat that you wear, right? You can be on a very high fat keto diet and still lose weight. There is not a lot of substantial difference vis-a-vis uh, -vis weight loss from diet to diet, but it's finding one that you feel like you can stick to. It's not one that works for you. It's one that you can work. For me, I tend to eat uh, lower carbs. I just, that's just how it is. It's easier for me. I'll, most of the foods that I really have a hard time abstaining from or eating in moderation tend to be very high starchy carby foods like french fries. But uh, I don't have too much of an issue with um, anything else. I don't think I can ever eat too much meat. I'm cool with eating like mostly veggies, you know, all that sort of stuff is okay for me. And so this was a diet that I felt like I could eat this way. I felt very satiated and I, you know, I can continue forward with that. But trying to do a diet where you don't feel satisfied with what you're eating and how much you're eating is not going to be sustainable for you in the long run. 
And once more, for most people, always the better approach is eating a balanced diet that yes, includes even some amounts of junk in it, right? You should have the flexibility in your diet to allow yourself to eat hot Cheetos and ranch every once in a while without freaking out about it. You should also be okay with thinking, oh, today I just don't feel that hungry, so I'm just not gonna eat and not feel compelled to eat all of the calories you can't eat just because you can eat them, which is what Amberlynn does a lot. If she has excess calories at the end of the day, she'll eat them because she's like, well, how can I meet that threshold? You don't have to. You're eating in response to what you feel like eating. But like with any muscle, to be able to build up the strength to eat something that you really like and say, oh, I'm good. I only wanted a little bit of that today. You have to exercise that. You have to exercise restraint. You have to exercise portion control. And you have to build up those metaphorical muscles so that later on in life, when you get to the more tempting foods, the fast foods, the, the chips and the candy, you have the ability to do so. By cutting out fat from your diet, what you're essentially doing is you're just eliminating any ability that you might have to moderate the amount of high fat foods that you would eat. So for me, I know that I can eat about a handful of nuts and then after that I'm very satisfied with them. But if you don't give yourself that that leeway, if you don't give yourself that kind of path, you're not going to be able to abstain from them. You're not going to learn how to exercise that restraint. Now you're going to think, well, you just said you're doing a very low carb diet. You know, isn't that the same thing? You're also not eating carbs. That is true. I'm not eating carbs because for me, right now, at this moment, they are not a, a good option. I have, like I said, I had a health condition a little while ago. Because of that, I don't eat carbs right now. Um, I don't eat a lot of um, starchy foods. I don't eat a lot of sweet foods. I do eat them on occasion. And when I eat them, I make sure that I pro that I exercise proper restraint. But I just don't eat them. And this is what's advised by my... Um, dietitian and by my doctor. That being said, this is a temporary plan. Once I go back to eating like I want to eat, I should have the ability to exercise restraint there too, which is what I'm currently doing, right? With Between my doctor and my dietitian, we are slowly transitioning me off of the more um, low-carb keto-y food and onto the more carby food. And while I'm eating this food, while I'm eating the, the higher carb foods, I'm exercising restraint each and every day. And I'm choosing better carbs for me than I, would, than I was doing before. Before I wanted to eat just white bread and white potatoes and all of that. Now I'm trying to vary my diet. I'm trying to have white potatoes occasionally, but also sweet potatoes sometimes. And also whole wheat, you know, bread from an artisanal bakery and Wonder Bread. I, I'm trying to give myself that flexibility, eat all of those foods so that I get used to, to moderating, to recognizing when I'm full, when I'm hungry and recognizing when I'm satiated and learning to exercise those muscles and build up that ability within myself. I'm just doing it gradually. And like you said, and like I said, all of this is much, much easier for me because I'm listening to my doctor, because I'm listening to my dietitian. And yes, I even have a therapist, right? My therapist has nothing to do with my eating, but I do have one. I do speak to them on a regular basis, and it is immensely helpful to me and my mental health. Amber is in a very fortunate position. She has the ability to avail herself to the services of all of these professionals. She could probably have more services than I could because she can afford them. So the fact that she doesn't or the fact that she cherry picks the information that she wants to follow from any professional, it's extremely problematic and she's doing herself a disservice, quite frankly. One thing you'll learn about me, I don't like fat. So on meat. That is a no-go. Nope. I often feel like the reason why Amberlynn feels the need to eat out as often as she does is because she doesn't actually know how to make delicious tasting food at home. And so when she goes out and she eats this food that tastes so good, you know, it's harder for her to say no to that. All she eats as home at home is bl uh, bland, boring garbage. And... <laughs> that sounds really bad, 
but I really, really feel like it's pretty easy to remedy, right? For example, she's talking about chicken right here. Chicken skin and chicken fat are by far the most delicious part of a chicken. They just hold the most amount of flavor. Not, not, not everybody likes them. I personally don't like the texture of chicken skin. I have a weird textural thing with a lot of foods, but I love the flavor of it. So I tend to make a full chicken every once in a while. I'll cook down the skin until I can get all of the fat from it. And I keep the fat and I use it to make um, like savory pastry crusts and things like that. She doesn't need to do anything that fancy. I love cooking. I've said this before multiple times. It's one of my biggest joys in life, but not everybody needs to have a joy for it. If you follow a recipe though, you can at least make food that tastes pretty damn good at home. I've made orange chicken at home using uh, Joshua Weissman's recipe, actually, if anyone's interested. It's fantastic and it tastes so good. And I made a couple of tweaks here and there, like I used the air fryer to fry up the chicken. I used sweetener instead of sugar in my sauce. And I made the recipe a lot better for us, you know, to eat at home. I cooked it and it had all the flavors of eating from a Chinese takeout, but it was made by someone who cares about my heart health. <laughs> so it was really good. And I think that's what she needs to do. She needs to follow recipes and learn how to kind of do a couple of those things. And once she has a couple of dishes in her repertoire that she really likes, I think she'll struggle a lot less. I have a few dishes that I make over and over and over again, right? I make uh, my own hummus at home all the time. I make uh, butter chicken at home all the time. I make chicken tikka masala at home all the time. I make um, naans at home, you know, or, or pita breads pocketless pita breads, the Greek style one. I make those at home. We have a grill and we grill as much as we can when the weather allows it. And those are very easy foods for me. They're easy foods for me. I make them in a manner in which they're healthy, you know, rather than using cream and butter, I'm using Mexican table crema, which is a lot milder in flavor, but has a lot less fat in it too. And it's a lot lighter overall in calories. And so just making little tweaks here and there to make a recipe better for you, but still having delicious, tasty, satisfying food at home, I think will really, really help her in not eating out quite as much. Because as I watch this, I'm also remembering the fact that she's been eating out a lot in her recent videos, right? In uh, 2020, as it were, she's been eating out a lot more. She's been going to restaurants a lot more. She's been ordering in a lot more. She has the availability to her because Lexington is a bigger city. They probably have Uber Eats and Postmates and all of those other fun apps. And she's having issues controlling herself because she didn't have to exercise that control for her. Uh, she didn't have to exercise that control before because her location exercised it for her. So I really think a good thing for her to do would be to cook more. I know Becky is doing some of that, which is fantastic. Good on you, Becky. But I think Amber should also do some of that. Try cooking a few meals at home that she likes to find something that like orange chicken, if she likes it, find a recipe online that works for her that's easy to make and try replicating it at home and, and try it that way. Also, please, for the love of God, eat some vegetables. <laughs> I know that Amber occasionally will eat like a salad or something, but she needs to try and incorporate more veggies into like every single meal. I'm genuinely worried that she's going to become severely nutrient deficient. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the legs. It's like my least favorite part, but sometimes I'll eat on it. I know the skin is like not that healthy, but that's okay. Yes, the skin isn't that healthy. The skin has a ton of fat, but that's also why it's delicious. So I just want to thank you guys again for all of the support recently regarding Becky's mom. Like, it's just wonderful. Like, thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts, literally. Okay, the whole Becky's mom situation and the GoFundMe thing, I'm not gonna get into it on this video. Um, there's a ton of videos out there covering this topic. If you guys wanna watch them, I would, I would Google it. If you guys want me to cover it, I can also do that. You know, leave me comments down below if you guys wanna see something like that from me. No problem doing it, but you know, I'm not going to get into it.
that that's a whole other kettle of fish. I can't. Like, I know a lot of YouTubers, like, thumbs up the video if you like this and subscribe, the notification bell, um, leave a comment down below. Like, I can't do that. Because it's like, I'm not hating on YouTubers who do that because, like, I don't, I don't mind. Hi. But for me, I feel like if you like the video or if you have an opinion on it, if you want the notification bell on, if you want to subscribe, you'll do those things whether I ask you to or not. <laughs> I don't know how much I agree with this point because yes and no. On the one hand, yeah, if people want to subscribe, they want to turn on notifications, they want to comment, do all of those fun things. They will if they want to. But on the other hand, if you aren't a YouTuber, I don't think people realize just how much stuff like subscribing, liking, sharing with people, you know, turning on the notification bell, all those things, like just how much they can actually help push you in the in the algorithm. Because the way that the YouTube algorithm works is that the more popular something is, the more popular it will make it, right? It'll recommend it to more people, it'll push it to more audiences, and overall, it just does better. So. Every once in a while, giving your audience that reminder, I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, if they don't want to do it, they don't have to do it. It's not a compulsion or anything like that. But I think that's why YouTubers do it. That being said, I don't think Amber's really ever going to have this problem. The bulk majority of her audience are basically just hate watchers. And so they're going to come back one way or another so they can say more mean things to her. Um, deserved or not, I'm not, you know, that's up for debate, but they are gonna be back. So she never has to remind them because she knows she's gonna get the engagement. And in fact, she does a lot of very trolly things for that engagement. If she doesn't care if it's negative or positive. I think I'm gonna, I don't know. It might taste good, it might not, we'll see. I actually, wow. I prefer this right now. I don't understand. She just said that she eats them sometimes. So she should already know what a chicken leg and thigh quarter would taste like, right? A rotisserie chicken is a rotisserie chicken. There's not like a huge amount of flavor differentiation between them. I just edited out a burp. There's some mukbangers who are like, burp, 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 burp. oh, sorry, I farted. <laughs> and I'm over here like, oh. <laughs> Was that shade? at our dear foodie booty. Uh, 2019 was wild, man. I didn't even realize. I know when I watch mukbangs, I get super hungry while I'm eating it. And in the past, I tried to stop watching them because sometimes like watching a mukbang would make me like binge or overeat or whatever. But I'm trying to learn how to turn it into something positive instead of negative. I'm trying to watch them eat instead of me eating. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I don't ever want to stop watching mukbangs. I think it's mainly because like, I think about Star Brady, who used to be Divine Munchies. I adore her. B Loves Life, um, Zaddy Chunk Chunk, Nikocado Avocado. Like there are people who only do mukbangs that I thoroughly enjoy watching and it's like I don't ever want to lose them in that sense I don't ever want to not watch their videos um for me the hardest the hardest mukbanger to watch is B Love's Life because her seafood boils with her seafood sauce that's the most jealous I've ever been in my life no we don't know what you mean because you don't know what you mean, Amber. What you are actually saying, if you could hear yourself in, in its entirety and, and comprehend the words that are actually coming out of your mouth, you would realize that you like watching these people. It brings you joy. You don't want to stop doing anything that brings you joy. And so you're trying to find a justification that will allow you to both feel okay about watching them while and watching them essentially, right? It's called cognitive dissonance. You're alleviating all discomfort that you might feel from doing an action that you know is obviously bad for you.
have a bad habit of doing that and I am totally exhausted from this chicken, meaning I am full, I am done. I felt like I was sitting here eating forever and it's like, you look at it and you're like, well, she ate a little bit of it. <laughs> So this is something that, that I've noticed Amber Lynn does a few times where she'll just ramble on for a little bit and then she'll be like, oh, well, you know me, I ramble, ha ha. Amber's not dumb. I think people really don't give her enough credit. She is, she might not be Trisha Paytas level of trolls, but she is a pretty damn good troll in her own right. And she knows that the longer she keeps talking and the longer she keeps people in, in, entertained and, and you know, the more names she drops to see who her favorite mukbangers are, she's going to be able to put more ads on this video. So I don't agree with people when they say, well, she's not, you know, Amber's just so dumb. She's not dumb. She's a lot of things. I think delusional is very high up on the list, but I don't think dumb is one of them. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's pretty calculated, our girl. So that was the video. I am uh, mildly horrified to have watched another one of the ladies from the Amberverse having ripped a drink to a chicken with their bare hands. So, you know, that's traumatizing. I'm going to see if I can book more appointments with my therapist. But uh, all jokes aside, that wasn't a pretty sight, especially watching her talk about how uh, watching mukbangers makes her want to binge, but then she wants to continue mukbanging and watching mukbangers quite frankly i just i don't understand her thought process sometimes it's almost like she doesn't hear the words that are coming out of her mouth and i know what i said about cognitive dissonance and i realized that rationally that's what she's doing on an emotional level it feels so distant to me that it might as well be alien still i'll take this video of hers over her deep throating a chicken kebab on her lexington vacation any day of the week so you know there's that at least in the meantime, please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you truly hated it. You know, that's okay too. You can leave me a comment down below if there's something you want me to know or if there's a video recommendation that you have for me to watch or if there's a video that you want me to review slash react to. I've had a couple people recommend uh, a few channels here and there for me and, you know, I'm, I'm going to check them out. I think that's how I got Danielle McAllister too. So I'm going to go do that. In the meantime... Remember, I'm Jasmine, the sequel, and I am not relatable. Peace.